Hello everyone, I'm delighted to be joining you tonight to celebrate two things that are so important to me. Art and creativity on the one hand, and environmental kind of social change and issues on the other. So the intersection of those forces and the way in which your work addresses those forces um, is something that I feel very privileged to, to learn more about and to celebrate tonight. My friend James Sismond, who's an anthropologist, argues that the birth of culture happened probably around the time that humans discovered how to make fire, which, you know, was itself a very creative discovery. But in doing so, what that allowed us to do is to cook pieces of meat. And by eating cooked meat, we could eat high energy food that then freed up our time, um, freeing us from the bondage that many other species continue to be in and that we apparently were in before of having to constantly graze and constantly look for food to fill our energy needs. By eating cooked meat, we suddenly had free time. And with free time, we were able to paint on walls, to tap and make music, to think more. And it gave way to the cognitive revolution and the birth of culture that we see made manifest today. And arguably, it's that, it's that creative cultural force that differentiates our species from other species and has given rise to extraordinary accomplishments. I'm not going to list, you know, inventing the internet, flying to the space, all the kind of cliches of things we've done, but our species has done some pretty amazing, extraordinary things. But it also enables to do some pretty devastating things. And as we see in the really powerful imagery of um, Edward Batinsky tonight, we have entered a new geological era, the Anthropocene. Such has been the human creative impact in the world. It's gone beyond just the human world and into the actual geological world, the natural world for every other species too, in ways that have been as often as devastating um, and damaging as illuminating and empowering. And so we should never underestimate the role of creativity, which obviously often happens, you know, that when we think about social change and environmental issues, people think about the role of politics, industry, economics, and there's a lot of um, emphasis on those forces, science on solving these challenges. And of course, those are important. And somehow often art and creativity is sometimes considered a kind of like niche, you know, bourgeois hobby on the side, um, a nice thing to have. But it's so instrumental. It's instrumental in creating and shaping our world. It's instrumental in creating the values and the way we think, our collective psychology, our zeitgeist, and then how that then influences everything else. Um, and it also gives us a reason to live. I mean, as, ev as everyone's been kind of locked in their homes, huddled in their houses, in the prisons or the palaces of their minds for the last year, art and creativity has been so important for many and I, and whether it's memes and songs shared on social media or you know picking up a paintbrush or a guitar and indulging in in a hobby that you once had i think the role of art and creativity um as bringing joy and meaning and purpose to life and allowing us to open our minds allowing us to empathize with others experiences um, allowing us to think in a new way and for trying to create the more positive future that we know in our hearts is possible. I hope you have a beautiful night. I look forward to, I was going to say I look forward to seeing who wins, but that's sort of irrelevant. No, no offence to the winners, but there are no winners, right? You're all winners. You're all winners. <laughs> I look forward to following your work in the years to come. Thank you so much. So, well, now the awards part of the evening has come to an end, but I'd like to um, welcome Lily Cole from her home in Portugal. Hopefully the line will stay, uh, stay open and stay strong. Um, Lily, it's great to have you here. Um, really wonderful. I'd love to hear your reaction to watching the Appers tonight. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm so inspired. I was inspired already because I'd um obviously read about um, everyone's work coming into tonight but um, seeing it again re-reminded me you know that it's just inspiring isn't it to to see um, so many different talented artists dedicated to their practice working in different ways bringing meaning in different ways so yeah it's uh yeah it's an honor to be here wonderful yes it, it every year it teaches me so many different uh things actually reading through all the applications it's uh, especially when we there's new new uh, categories coming in every year, so it's fantastic. Um, makes me always feel I should do more, actually. 
<laughs> um, yeah. I know that you're incredibly busy all the time. You have l so many different projects going on. Um, and um, I know that you've written a, an amazing book, um, Who Cares Wins, um, which you argue that, um, that it's for us to choose optimism, to make changes and to create the future we want. How do you see creativity in the arts encouraging this optimism? It's an interesting question. Um, I actually chose in writing that book to um, interlace it throughout with references to art. And so just occasionally, almost randomly throughout the book, I'll use artworks as metaphors to then illustrate a point. Um, and the reason I did that is one, because I have a kind of interest in art, propensity to art, and I find it an interesting way to think about issues and problems. Um, but also because I do think art, and I mean art in a broad sense, not just in a narrow sense, but art and creativity um, provides a really important alternative window onto the world. And it doesn't have to be an optimistic one. I don't think that you know art makes us necessarily more optimistic it, or is always optimistic. That can be one outcome of it. Um, but obviously art can have many different impacts. I think that shining a light on the kind of present day reality is often a very, very important role that art has that is not always optimistic, but is realistic. Um, but then I think that some art is very visionary and allows us to think of alternative futures and think of alternative pathways um, ahead of us. And I think that's really important to, to inspire um, our culture and our you know communities to, to move in new directions. Um, so, so yeah, actually I have, um, bodies Isaac Kingalas. I don't know if you know his work, he builds utopian cities out of um, kind of like commercial mm -hmm. debris and little sculptures. Um, I use his work to talk about kind of new visions and um, and yeah, kind of utopias and how we like have to, the, the Picasso quote, you, once you once you imagine it, it's real, I think is the quote, you know, that we have to visualize stuff in order to get there. Um, and then I end the book on um, a work by Anna Mendieta, uh, where you know her body her her body work um, body artworks where she'll put her naked mm -hmm. body into nature and you know cover cover it in earth or cover it in flowers or different Amazing. um parts of the natural world to remind us that we are nature and we are that's how I interpret it anyway we are we are one with the planet well it, it sounds like you're uh, very much at one with the planet because you're living quite far away from everywhere in Portugal. Um, but, uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very plan. jealous, actually. <laughs> no, it's I really mean, if you saw my setup right now with like a laptop, a light, uh, I don't feel so, I've got a lot of technology around me. I don't feel like Anna Mendieta right now, but I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so wonderful to, uh, to, to, to have you here tonight. And thank you for coming um, on, uh, on the event. Um, I really wish you, um, there's an amazing podcast, uh, Who Cares Wins, by the way, that Lily uh, has been doing. Um, any, if you catch it, um, it's always on there. Um, and, and her book, of course. But um, it's been really nice. You've got so many projects going on, um, also with new, new products and supporting entrepreneurial, sustainable businesses as well. Um, but I wish you all the best with those. Um, and that we will see you again at the awards in the future, I hope. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations. Yeah, it's a wonderful initiative and it's been yeah really inspiring and well done to everyone who was nominated because obviously, um, mm. you know, there are, there are only a handful of winners, but as I said in the first video, that everyone's a winner, you know, because you have to have succeeded to have made it to the nomination list. So I was really, yeah, really impressed and keep going.